as you may be able to tell, I am no longer in West Palm Beach. So I haven't really vlogged much since I've been home. I didn't really vlog the whole traveling deal because like, quite frankly, that gets old. It's just like all the airplane B-roll, it just, it's an overload and I don't know, I just hate editing those kind of videos sometimes. Well, I wasn't really looking forward to coming back to this cold state. It is kind of nice to be here during the first snow of the season. We actually got a ton of snow. We got about, what's like six or seven inches, which is pretty insane. <laughs> To be completely honest with you guys, I'm in a bit of a, what's the correct word for this, predicament? Let me catch you guys up for all you guys out there that don't follow me on Instagram. So like just a few days ago, I posted this picture right here of a 2014 red Porsche Panamera. That's a huge mistake. And in the description I said 20,000 likes and I'll buy it. And then right below that I said 30,000 likes and I'll buy it and get my hair chopped like Perix. I'm sure a lot of you guys who watch my videos are aware that I really like this car, but it was kind of supposed to be whole parody on when Flair posted that picture of his truck and said like, if this gets a thousand retweets, I'll buy it. A lot of people got frustrated and angry. So there are just short of a thousand comments on this. And I would say a majority of these comments are saying, why would you waste your money on this car? Why don't you get a boat and truck? I think it's just kind of strange that other people tell me what I should spend my money on, like a truck and boat, and telling me that it's a bad investment and that I should buy a boat. It's just insane as to how many comments I get saying like, oh, don't do this, like you shouldn't spend your money on this. Like, I'm just expressing my thoughts and opinions here. I do appreciate the fact that a lot of people were commenting in regards to the fact that they were kind of like, you know, concerned for me, like, dude, why the hell are you buying a Porsche? Or why are you thinking about buying a Porsche? Which is good, and you guys are looking out for me, which is awesome, but there was a lot of people there that were just like, Oh, don't waste your money and I get a truck. Why? Because everyone else who fishes has a truck? Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. I'll just I'll, I'll just get what everyone else has. Yeah, I'll buy a Chevy. You know what? Now that I'm thinking about this, guys, I was going to buy a Porsche Panamera, but now I'm going to buy a Chevy Silverado 1500. That's exactly what I'm going to buy because no one has one of those. Oh, you know what I'll do too? I'll give it a four inch lift and get the headlights tinted. Dude, this is going to be such an original vehicle. And you know what? Nobody who fishes has one of those vehicles. It just seems kind of dumb to me. It got me all worked up. It was supposed to be a joke, but a lot of people got mad. Oh my God. Whew. I mean, I always like to stick to my word. I have done it up until this point. Do I buy the Porsche Panamera? I don't know, you guys let me know in the comment section below. I will definitely not get my hair cut like Perrick's though. There's no way. You're more likely to see me whipping around a Porsche Panamera than walking around the streets of Illinois with Perrick's haircut. I don't know, I feel bad about posting this. It was really just supposed to be for fun. My apologies for those of you guys who got worked up. Let's just put all that behind us, so that was just ridiculous. I had to touch base on it, though, because the freaking picture got 30,000 likes. 30,000 likes, really? Actually, got 31,000. Oh, God. Mm, what else? That's about it. I have nothing going on. To be truthful, I feel like I'm a pretty creative individual, especially when it comes to making videos like this, but I'm just gonna cut right to the chase. I literally have <laughs> absolutely nothing interesting to film and or vlog about, so... I'm gonna make this simple on you guys and try to think outside the box. As opposed to me just like doing a bunch of errands and filming me doing a bunch of errands, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna condense this video into something completely different opposed to, hey guys, this is me going to the grocery store. Hey guys, this is me going to the doctor. Hey guys, this is me hanging out with my ex-girlfriend. We're not gonna do that because I feel like I've been doing it a lot lately and it's tough to do that, especially coming off this amazing Florida trip. Like how in the world can I transition from shark fishing on the beach to now sitting in my basement here in Northern Illinois. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta switch screens so nothing embarrassing shows up. Okay, that's good. Hold on, make sure my audio is on, give me a second. Oh, we're good, my levels are bounced. Maybe move that light up a little bit. Sorry guys. This is my first time ever doing a YouTube video, so make sure we're on wide. Oh, we weren't on wide, that's real. Today I'm gonna talk about very, very stupid looking lures that I've actually caught fish on this year. The first lure I actually had to order, I, I'm not much of a saltwater angler, and the first time I used this lure was when I was fishing in West Palm Beach. And I remember very, very vividly when I first saw this thing and was told that it was gonna catch me barracuda, I had immediate doubt. I'm not even really sure if you wanna call this a lure. I think it's safe to say we can just call it surgical tubing. First time I ever fished in West Palm Beach, I was with uh, my buddy Lawson, and he's like, yeah, man, we're gonna get out there in this little in this little bay, this little cut, and we're gonna fish a barracuda. And I'm like, sick, what are we gonna use? Like, you know, like top water, uh, swim baits, live bait, like what's on the agenda? He's like, nah, man, we're gonna throw these right here. 
This thing looks, I mean, I mean, you see it. It looks ridiculous. But what's crazy about it is this right here seemed to be the most effective tactic that we threw that day for these barracuda. Here's the, some of the, the, the bites and the eats that we got from these fish. I couldn't even put in all the attacks and strikes we had from the barracuda because there were so freaking many. But this literally caught me my first barracuda. Not a piece of live bait, not a lure, um, a piece of surgical tubing with hooks on it. So, moral of the story, never underestimate stupid looking lures. Okay, on to the next one. The next ridiculous lure on our agenda today is the infamous duck lure. I originally saw the lure at iCast. It was marketed as a musky bait, but some of the dudes over at Savage Gear were trying to weasel their way into the bass market with this lure right here. And I had just absolutely no faith in the fact that anyone, for one, was gonna buy this and two, catch a single fish on this thing. Sorry, my bat just slid and hit the tripod. That was probably annoying. It honestly looks like a toy, I mean, let's be honest. What happened was this Mike, AKA One Rod One Reel, sent me this lure and basically challenged me to catch a fish on this. We had kind of like a, a a one on one challenge. So I went to like a juiced up pond. Like, I'm not gonna lie, the pond that I went to was really good. It's not like they stock that pond monthly or yearly for that matter, but it's got some decent fish on it and there's not a whole lot of pressure. But in all honesty, out of all the lures that I threw that day, this right here is the one that got the most eats, the most blow ups. And they weren't just like coming up out of the water for it and nipping at it, they were destroying this duck. Like, they actually wanted it. I was throwing all sorts of basic stuff, but no joke, this one caught me the biggest bass and got me the most bites. This duck has a special place in my heart. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's not a terrible lure. So the question is, John, will you continue to throw the duck in 2017? Absolutely. It catches big fish and it gets bit. So who doesn't wanna say I caught a bass on an artificial duck? It's just pretty badass. So the last ridiculous lure that I've used this year that has yielded me successful results are big double eight and what is this, a double, oh, this is a double eight, this is a double cowgirl. Double eight and double cowgirl inline spinners. They're basically musky lures. And this year I tried to get into musky. Granted, I, I kind of got in a little late. I didn't try very hard. Next year's gonna be a different season, but that's that's for another video. We're not gonna talk about that right now. What we are gonna talk about are all the times that I've thrown these lures and not caught musky and I've actually caught bass. This specific lure, this exactly right here, has caught me a bass. I went out and tried to film a video at this Clearwater Stone Quarry here in Northern Illinois. Everything I was throwing should have gotten bit. Did not get a single bite. So I went to the car and I found my musky rod and I was like, hey, might as well just get tuned in with this and start throwing it out there and have some luck with it, right? You know, I'll just, I mean, there's no musky in the stone core that I'm fishing, but I just want to kind of get in the flow and the swing of things. I tie on the double cowgirl, the tinsel double, du the tinsel, let's sound this out, John B. The tinsel double cowgirl, take one cast with this thing and I get bit as soon as I take one freaking full crank of the reel. I think sometimes as anglers or even bass anglers, we think way too hard about specific techniques. And there are times when, when you know, critical thinking matters, especially when the bite's tough, but that's a perfect example. Like that to me is not a fluke. You can't call that a fluke. It was a situation where that fish was there. He wanted a specific something, whether it had been a, one of these guys or a drop shot. And it just so happens it was that thing that day. That's what he was in the mood for. And I threw it at him and he ate it. I definitely encourage you guys to uh, at least give some of these lures a chance. Because who knows, it might be uh, might be that one lure that you catch your personal best on. As you may be able to tell, I've run out of ideas to make here in Northern Illinois. I really should be out fishing, but I've been super busy. I've been getting ready for this really big, epic, 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 super insane, unreal trip here in January. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to keep it on the DL. Just I'm just getting my life together. As you can see right here, we'll turn the camera around. As you can see right here, um, my life's a bit out of order. I'm all over the place, but in the meantime, I can make these uh, these crusty videos for you guys. It allows me to kind of take a break and just sit in front of the camera here in my here in my basement and uh, talk to you guys about something different opposed to bass fishing at ponds here in Northern Illinois. If you want to know any of the lures that I talked about in today's video, I will leave them linked in the description below. Hope you guys have an amazing holiday. Go out there, crack some toads. It's getting cold, so for all you ice anglers out there, um, pull out the 24 inch rods and throw away the eight footers. Let's catch some fish to the ice. <laughs> Why did I say that? As always, keep fishing, never stop.